So for every form of restlessness, for whenever a person, a child of God thinks that they are lost in this world, when you think that you can't break forth into the new things that God has in store for you, like I said, the answer is the Holy Spirit of God. So today, what we are going to do is, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what we see in Ephesians 4, 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So what we are going to do now is we are going to look at five ways how people grieve the Holy Spirit. We are going to look at five different ways as to how, when I say people, it's mostly children of God. Why? Because it's a child of God that has a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at what grieves the Holy Spirit. And this is an area where all of us need to improve. Let me say this, none of us are perfections. We are not perfect, only God is perfect. And God can help us to be complete in this area where we have a strong, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, where we don't grieve him. So before we start looking at what really grieves the Holy Spirit, let's look at who the Holy Spirit is. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the main channel of communication between God and man today. He is the main channel of communication. There are other ways God communicates. For example, God may speak to you through a dream. When that happens, what should you do? You should turn to the Holy Spirit for the interpretation. Why? In Genesis chapter 40, verse number 8, we find the words of a young man who was able to interpret dreams so well by the name of Joseph. And he says, interpretations belong to God. The interpretation of dream belongs to God. So even when you see a dream, when you receive a dream, you must always turn to the Holy Spirit of God for the interpretation. So remember, he's the main channel of communication between God and man today. And he's also the greatest comforter. How we can be at peace today at complete peace is by being, by having a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the greatest teacher. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 says that God reveals the deep things through him. And it also reminds me of what Jesus said again in, in John 14, 26, that he can teach us all things. When the Holy Spirit, the comforter comes, he can teach us all things. Hallelujah. What else? He is the only one who can lead us into all truth. Jesus said in John 16, verse 13, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you and lead you into all truth. Then he is our greatest source of strength and power today. Just before Jesus ascended, he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. Hallelujah. So how are we powerful today? Yesterday we were, this was our theme during the prayer time. We have power because of the Holy Spirit. And then he is the one who facilitates the anointing. The Holy Spirit facilitates the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 says that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So remember the Holy Spirit is also the one who facilitates the anointing. Now let's look at ways that children of God grieve the Holy Spirit. So here what I have actually done is the theme verse for today is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 that says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So these ways that I'm sharing with you are taken from the verses that are before verse 30 and after verse 30. Why? Because they are all linked to this verse. The first way that a child of God grieves the Holy Spirit is through Corrupt communication. Now, what is corrupt communication? The Bible tells us that corrupt communication is communication that does not edify others and doesn't minister grace unto the hearers. This is what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. 
let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It's after this verse you find verse 30 that says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Always remember what comes out of your mouth must become a blessing to the one who is inside of you. The Holy Spirit of God, because he listens to every word that comes out of your mouth. So pay attention to the things that you speak. Pay attention to the words that come out of your mouth. The book of Proverbs, I believe it's uh, chapter 18, verse 21, that says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. What do you speak? What do you confess? What do you proclaim? What kind of words, sentences come out of your mouth? What kind of declarations do you speak? Does it bless the one who is residing inside of you? Remember, corrupt communication grieves the Holy Spirit of God. Then, the second way, what we action through anger. This is another way that a child of God can grieve the precious Holy Spirit today is by the things that we may do through anger. The Bible tells us that what we do or what we do through anger grieves the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is very gentle. Now, I need to say this, that sometimes because of something that happens, you might get angry. That's fine. That's completely fine. But you must be careful as to what you do out of that anger. That is where the problem lies. Now, let's see. Let's, let's look at what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 says. Immediately after verse 30. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger be put away from you with all malice. Look at this. Keep away anger. And the Bible instructs us not to sin through anger. Sorry, I think I have made a mistake here in, in the wording. The Bible instructs us not to sin through our anger. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 26 says, Be angry. That's all right if you get angry. But sin not. Do not sin. Let not the sun go down upon your anger. Deal with that anger. Bring it down to subjection. Every day as you spend time with the Holy Spirit of God, your ability to control your emotions will improve. Why? Because it's the spirit that has control over the soul. Emotions are part of the soul. So remember, Jesus got angry. Sometimes people say, you know, I have heard this from unbelievers. They have said, you know, you talk so highly about Jesus, but Jesus got angry. Yes, Jesus got angry for the right reason. In John chapter 2, when he was in Jerusalem, the temple, the people there, they had made the temple a, a, a house of merchandise. They had made it a, a business place, a marketplace. So Jesus got angry for the right reason. Remember, whenever you get angry, what you do out of that anger has it falls back on the Holy Spirit of God who is in you. Then, not loving others. This is another way that a child of God can grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Loving others, whether they are lovable or unlovable, is not a choice for us. We have to love others. We have to love even those who are unlovable. The Bible says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for them who despitefully use you and persecute you. Words of Jesus. And then, why do we need to love others? Because God saved us because he loves us. He loved us so much. According to John 3, 16, he gave his only son. And he wants us to love others as he did. John 14, verse 34, and also verse 35, tells us that we have to love others. And it's by that love, people will know that we are his disciples. Remember, if you want to bless the presence of the Holy Spirit who is in you, and if you are serious about not grieving his presence, we have to love others. This is an area we need to keep improving on a daily basis. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, be kind one to another and tender-hearted. We have to love others. It's not an option. Fourth way, is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a powerful tool 
a negative powerful tool that really hurts and grieves the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness. As much as forgiveness is powerful, unforgiveness is also powerful. The Bible tells us that our unforgiveness grieves the Holy Spirit. Why? Because God is full of mercy and they are new every day. This is what we see in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Remember, unforgiveness grieves the very heart of God. And as much as it can do that, unforgiveness can also become a blessing blocker for you today. If you don't, if you are finding it difficult to forgive someone, ask God to give you grace so that with his grace, you'll be able to forgive anyone who has hurt you. Then we are still in Ephesians chapter four. Remember, like I said, we are looking at verses that are before and also after. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving any man, forgiving anyone, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So when we don't forgive others, when we carry unforgiveness in our hearts, what it does is it grieves the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Because God is full of forgiveness. Then, last but not least, not growing in the knowledge of God's will. This is another way that a child of God can grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, why do I say this? Because like I shared right at the beginning, the Holy Spirit is the most important medium of communication between God and man today. And according to the Bible, God wants every child of him to know what he has in store in his will for him. For example, I know that God has his will for me, but I must know what he has in store for me in his will. Joy must know what she has, what God has in store for her in his will. So this is an area where we have to grow together with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the main medium of communication between God and his children, like I shared. He reveals the deep things through the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. And then the Holy Spirit can teach us all things. Remember, like I shared before, the Holy Spirit facilitates the anointing. And 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, the anointing can teach you all things. Hallelujah. Then, last but not least, the Holy Spirit helps us to sharpen our spiritual understanding better. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says that we must grow in the knowledge of God's will. We must desire to grow in the knowledge of God's will on a daily basis. And in order for us to do that, we need to hear from the Holy Spirit. This is where the Holy Spirit comes into the picture and where he becomes very important in us, knowing what God has in store for us. Hallelujah. Remember, when a child of God does not desire to know the things that God has in store for them, that grieves the Holy Spirit of God. And this is the final slide for today. Are you grieving the Holy Spirit in any of these ways today, like we looked at from the beginning. How is your communication? Does foul language come out of your mouth? Like I said, are you paying attention to things that you declare? Then how do you control yourself when you are angry? How well do you love others? Like I said, love is not an option for us. Then we get the fourth area. How easily do you forgive others. Do you easily forgive others when you get hurt? And then how serious are you about growing in the knowledge of God's will? Hallelujah. No, the best thing that can happen to all of us has already happened. What people did not have in the Old Testament, we have received today. The precious Holy Spirit of God. And he is so precious. He is so precious that we must not grieve him. The truth is the Holy Spirit gets grieved easily because he's very gentle. He's very gentle. And because he's very gentle, he gets easily grieved. So this is why it's important for us not to grieve the precious Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So I pray that God will help all of us on a daily basis. And as much as God does, God does, he helps us. That's why he has given the Holy Spirit 
we must have, it's us who must have a desire not to grieve him. And we must, as much as we receive strength from him, we must also be practical, we must also be methodical, we must also be wise when it comes to how we conduct ourselves where we don't end up grieving the precious Holy Spirit. So I bless this message I, to all of you. Let it become a blessing as you keep meditating on it in the days to come. Make it a desire every day not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. God bless you.